quantum mechanics. That's what we're talking about today. We're going to use a coin as our example um, of a particle or something. And it's got two sides, and so two states it could be in. And we're going to talk about what it means to observe things in quantum mechanics. Mm -hmm. So, quantum mechanics talks about how the observer can determine reality. And a lot of people make a big hoo-ha out of that, and they're all full of stuff, and it's not right. Okay? I want to make sure everybody understands what we mean when we say that, and probably shouldn't even say it at all. But, for example, this is my coin, okay? and it can be heads, nice little picture of John Kennedy there, or it can be tails, pretty little eagle, got some arrows in his claw, you know, it's a good coin. Okay? All right, so it can be heads, it can be tails. All right? That's just like particles. Particles, a lot of times you can take a look at them, down at the quantum mechanical level, you know, all kinds of stuff. They could be in one state, or they could be in another state. That's part of what the quantum side of quantum mechanics says. You can you could be here or there, and you're never anywhere in between. Okay, so but that's another day. So this is going to be kind of like a particle. It can either be heads, or it can be tails. All right, and there's no way to be something in between. Okay, now if this were a particle, uh, you can have a particle sitting, and it might have a potential to be uh, one state or another state. Okay, and actually, the particle ends up being what's called a superposition of two states. Okay, so it's either, it's, it's, it, it, it might be in one state, it might be another, and you just don't know which one is in, and actually it's kind of half in both states, okay, if it's a 50-50 chance, which is what we're using here. So really, when I'm spinning the coin all right, on the table, that counts as a particle that's got a superposition of the head state and the tail state. It's either heads or it's tails. We don't know. It's kind of in both states at once. And we don't know what's going to happen. Okay? And then we do our experiment. And this is what the observer affecting reality comes in. Okay? We do our experiment, okay? and then bam, all right, we put a hand on it, and we find out if it's heads or tails right then. We measure it. And as soon as we measure the spinning coin, and the only way we can measure it is by slapping our hand down on top of it, Okay? Then we find out, and boom, it snaps to one state or the other. Okay? While it's spinning, it's kind of part heads, part tails at the same time. Okay? Even those are two different things. Really, heads and tails are different. But it's kind of doing both at once. Okay? And you don't know what it is until we measure it by slapping our hand down. That is an observation. So if I slap my hand down and measure the coin, you can see whether it's heads or tails. It's heads. Okay? So it's snapped to this state. Now, I can make more measurements to the coin. Look, it's still heads. I can still measure the coin, right, with the same measurement, right? And it's not like it changes state. So when I did the first measurement, you didn't know whether it was going to be heads or tails, OK? But then I can keep measuring it afterwards, and it's still always the same uh, state, the head state. And that's the way it is with uh, particles, OK? When you first observe it, Okay, the coin had a potential to be one of two states. Okay, in fact, it was really technically the way physicists treat the particles. It's actually in both states at the same time. Okay, you just don't know what it's going to fall into until you measure it. When you measure it, okay, whoops. When you measure it, then it snaps into one state, and that's the state it's going to stay in. Okay, unless you physically bump it around. But if you keep measuring it, uh, it'll stay. It's it's in that state unless you do some other funky thing, such as the measurement, you know, knocks it around. Okay. So we sort of determine reality by measuring it so that we see what state it's in. Uh, but it's, it's, it's not like we created some new state out of it. We, we couldn't say, oh, we want it to be the state we want it in. You know, we can't dictate that it. it has to be this way. Um, and so it's not like we make reality around us by looking and observing at it. Uh, it's just that by observing, we find out what state it's in. Okay. You can't reobserve it and change its state now. Okay, so just want to be clear that we cannot make our own reality by our observations. It's more of we find out what the world is by making observations. And uh, until we make the observations, we don't know the answer. Okay, and in fact, uh, so you, could, you can kind of mess with your head and say the answer doesn't even exist until we make the observation, right? Because you don't know where it's going to go. All right, so there's this guy named Schrodinger, okay, who had a thing. Uh, against animals, because he thought this was the dumbest thing he ever heard in his life. Well, not really, but he wanted to make a case that this is absolute silliness. So what he got was he got a cat and a box. All right, and this is called what's called fun fun fact a Gedanken experiment. So if you know what a Gedanken Gedanken means, a thought experiment. So he didn't really actually do this experiment. He doesn't hate cats, okay? But he said this is silly. 
because you could take a cat, all right, you could stuff it in a box so you can't see it. Meow, 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 meow. All right, so it's in the box, all right. So now I have a box of cat. Box O Cat, five ninety nine at your local Petco. Okay, so uh, you have the box of cat, and then you set things up so that this poor cat is going to die with a 50-50 chance. Okay, now I don't support killing cats. I own a cat. My wife owns a cat. It's a beautiful little cat. We love the cat. Okay, I like cats. All right, but in this case, uh, the cat might die with 50-50 chance. So we set off an experiment so that the cat may or may not, like maybe there's a coin in the box and it flips. And if it's heads, the cat's dead. If the head tails, a cat gets to live. Okay? Boom! We've done the experiment now. Now the cat is either alive or dead in the box. Which is, we don't know. Okay? Until we open the box to check. So we could consider the cat to be sort of like our little quantum mechanics particle. And the cat being, it, maybe it's partly live, partly dead. It's in both states at once because we don't know what it is until we look at it. Now, this is just an analogy to say how silly quantum mechanics is. Okay. In reality, the cat is either dead or alive, right? And so, but it, to compare it to quantum mechanics, quantum mechanics can actually have a cat be alive and not alive at the same time, okay? Until you check. In real life, the cat's either dead or alive. We open it up and look, it's not even a cat at all. It's a stuffed animal. So, you know, what are you going to do with that? Wow.